Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and we're going to be doing the letter N for November in uh, illuminated letters. And I've already pre-drawn something up just so that you don't have to um, watch me try to figure things out. <laughs> uh, so this is the printable that you can uh, download and print if you want to paint along with me. And it is a uh, letter N, and I'm going to make this trees. And then the little bunny, um, and a little squirrel. And we'll paint this in watercolor. And I'm going to have a little bit of a sky thing going on in here with some, maybe some water coming down. And you can uh, get the traceable, downloadable on the uh, members uh, site on Patreon or in the YouTube membership in the, the uh, community page. So it's already up there if you want to download it and play along with me. So I thought I would put it on here and possibly two page this time. I could put it on one page. And maybe I'll put it on the one page. It'll just miss a bit of the... So if you want to do that, you can do that. This is printed out uh, 8 by 10. Or you can go 5 by 7, whatever you want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out, and this is uh, tracing paper. And I want my, oops, just make sure you got it centered. There's the edge of my book. There and there it could go up a little bit, I think. And there. That looks pretty good. So what I just normally do is I can take a another pen or another pencil, maybe colored pencil, and just draw the main. You don't have to do all of the um, this inside just represent uh, some of it so you know where it is. So you, or you can, if you want to spend the time and draw it all out, that's what it's made for. So I have a little uh, bunny and a pesky squirrel. Squirrels are all going crazy right now, trying to get their winter stash put away. And I'll put in my little squirrely here. So I know where he is. And you could change it up if you want. You can put uh, apples on the tree if you wanted to, or you, you don't have to put the squirrel in either. It could be just see a um, bunch of leaves. Uh, this one here is kind of the ground, and I'm going to have kind of a 
river running through here and maybe some mountains or hills or something in there maybe we'll see and then there's a tree behind here and then i'm just gonna put just a bit of this squiggle in so i know where the tree parts are um, I'm going to keep the reference beside me for referring to. So I don't have to put all of this in. If you have the reference beside you, you just have to look at it and you can paint this stuff in. It's not, um, it doesn't have to be exact to what this printable is. You can change the leaves could make, um, depending on where you are, maybe you want palm trees or maybe you want evergreens. Do it, whatever you want, change it up. So this is my little bunny. He's kind of looking to the side a little bit. Kind of a fat bunny <laughs> just sitting there with his little belly now if you want a more of a, a realistic bunny you could put that in i thought i would just kind of put a funny bunny in sometimes it's cute to go a little bit on the cartoon side, whimsical side, whatever. So knees there. I think I got everything I really need. So let's just lift the paper without taking it off. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to have this beside me here. And... Now, this is the Sorel tracing paper, so it does leave this stuff here. But all you have to do is take a kneaded eraser, and it comes right off. That's the nice thing about um, this type of tracing paper, is that it can be removed very easily. Some of the other tracing papers that you get have a, a wax on them. And when they have that wax in the carbon or whatever, it's very difficult to remove. So you can just erase those areas. And you could even um, tone it down by rubbing your kneaded eraser over top just a little bit just to bring that darkness of the of the lines down a little so it doesn't show through the watercolor as much I'll just do a little bit like that that should be good enough okay and I am um, let's see I got my Paint's already primed, so they've been dampened, and I have my water here. Let's see, let me put that over there. The bucket of water, it's a two-sided water, so you rinse your dark, like really painty brushes in here, and then you just use this side for um, if you need cleaner water. On your brush so we'll be using uh, silver black velvet and this is a number four what's this one and this is 
Wands, a number eight. Now I did, I'm going to confess, I did get some brushes. <laughs> yep. I didn't have enough, apparently. But I saw there was a brush. Where is it? This one? Yes. Um, there's a new, well, I don't know if it's new, but... Um, Oh, what's that? Steve from The Mind of Watercolor, I think it is. This is his brush, his new brush. It's Golden Natural Blend Round by Silver. Same uh, manufacturer as these, but it's um, a little different. So I thought I'd try one of those. I got two of them. Uh, this is a number eight, and this is a number four. Those are the ones I tend to use the most, I find. So I thought I would try those. I'm going to put it in water, get the starch or soap, whatever it is they put on them. Um, let's see. Hey, Dot! To see you. It's supposed to keep its point nicely. So we'll see. It's got a, a little bit more spring to it. So we'll see what I think of those. These are a little softer, I find. Yeah, they are softer. So the other one is a little bit of a stiffer brush. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, so we're gonna paint a little scenery in here. Just not, not a whole lot, but just a bit. And I think I'm gonna clean off my palette and start nice and new. Should have done this before, but I didn't think of it. These are great. These are a fine mist. They're awesome for watercolor and acrylics. Um, I use them to keep my paints wet on my palette. So if you're not using a wet palette, even if you're using a wet palette, sometimes the very top tends to uh, start to dry a little bit. And the mist on that is so fine, it's just a great uh, way to start. Oh, this was what we did on Thursday before we get started. Just thought I'd show you that. And there's a video up for everyone to watch on this one. And this was done with acrylics. And it's a step-by-step -step tutorial. All right. Shall we get started? So again, this is not watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna wet uh, the background here a little bit. And wherever you wet is where you'll get the paint to move. So if it's a dry area, the paint will not go in those areas. You just have to pay attention to those types of things. And I'm just going to put a bit of, this is um, Cobalt Blue by Winsor & Newton. And it's going to be a very pale background. Uh, maybe, a, maybe, let's see, maybe a little bit of aqua in there. Gonna make a mountain or some sort of a mountain, <laughs> and 
I just have to be careful of uh, how much water I put on here because it is just sketch paper. Maybe a little bit of purple. It's a lot. Let's take some of that out. And uh, that's going to make a really pretty blue. And I'm going to put it right in here, right down in here. So kind of travels up into the other one a little bit. And then this is part of a, a little piece of land closer, so it's going to be in the brown. So I'm going to get some uh, burnt umber here. I'm going to mix a little bit of Payne's Gray with it just to darken it up. And this is going to be the top of the mountain. And I'm not worried about it uh, bleeding into the other part. It'll kind of look like distant um, trees or foliage. When it spiders out like that, it's kind of cool. I like these because of the uh, point on them. So, okay, we'll get a piece of paper towel here. Okay, see how it's kind of light, it's lightening up a little bit, so that's good. Um, let's put a little bit over here, not much though, just a little bit, maybe, well, let's put a little bit of, um, dark in there, maybe there's a, mountain or hilltop in there. Maybe some green. I'm going to mix some leaf green with a little bit of permanent green. And let's have a little bit of a hill in here. I'm going to let that dark transition into that a little bit. That's fine. Now as that's drying, I don't want to paint into that too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hmm, let's do this a little squirrely here. So he'll be browns and um, hmm, maybe some sienna color too. We'll put a little bit of sienna color in there. So let's paint him. Might be, I think their bellies are usually a little bit lighter. And like I said, this is just to represent a squirrel, so it's not going to have a lot of detail to it. You can add a little bit of detail with uh, pen work if you want. So a little butt hair will be a little bit same color, but I'm going to leave um, the inside part of the foot, although that foot would probably be dark too. Eh, let's do them all dark. We'll do mostly... Um, pen work to emphasize stuff here. So it kind of looks like a squirrel anyways. Do you want me to bring you in or do you want to see my palettes? Let me know. All right, so we're going to use some of this bright green and I'm going to start just more or less dabbing. And we could change it up, maybe put a little bit of fall color in there also, but 
kind of have to uh, think about this as layers. So you'd have the brightest parts on the top and then a little bit darker as you go um, down into the green. So let's make a darker color here. So I'm adding a little bit of green Appetite Genuine and this one was Azo Green. That makes a really pretty color. So I'm just going to add some dark colors in here. So that would be looking further into the tree or bush or whatever you want to say it is. So I hope you're having all a fantastic day. It's a beautiful fall day here. Now you can do this either way too. You could start off with the, the darker color. Let's do this one here. So it'd be, I'm just keeping in mind the darkness would be either on the bottom part or if it's uh, being sheltered by something, like something's over top of it, then you would see some of that also shading it so it would be darker. So just keep those things in mind when you're uh, doing this type of foliage. A little bit of that in here. And I'm just dabbing and swiping. I'm not really doing any specific shape for a leaf. This is just to represent a leaf. Your mind will uh, fill in the blanks. It's amazing um, how little sometimes you can do. And people will still understand what it is. Get around this little bunny. So there'd be some darkness coming in here. And let's bring it all in here too. So maybe there's, we could put a little bit of maybe yellow in, show that it's starting to turn color. Okay. Um, let's do some of that bright green again. With a little bit of yazo in it. Maybe. I'm going to make it even brighter. Right on the very top it would be quite bright. We could even add white gouache later if you wanted to. There's really no way you can go wrong with this. <laughs> Just keep adding even gouache. Like It's so nice to have the gouache on top of this watercolor too. Let's just play. This is how you learn. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. You have to, what was that saying I saw? You have to be willing to fail in order to discover and learn. I think that's a great way to think. Stop thinking. Um, failure as a bad thing. It's not. Something doesn't work. Well, you just found out it didn't work. So you won't do that again. I'll add a little bit more dark in here. Right in here. because It's closer to the ground. So there'd be a little bit more darkness in there. Uh, maybe around his face here. Just a little bit. I can even darken it darker than that by adding a little bit of brown to it. 
or even red. If you add red to green, you will tone the color down. Um, it turns into almost a brown or an olive green. Okay, let's just put a little bit on that right in here because it would be shaded a little bit under this post or tree or whatever it is. I just ha wanted to make sure you noticed that it was um, a letter. Uh, let's put a little bit more red and some more green. Nice dark color. That's good. All righty. So there's our kind of leaves and stuff. Okay, so now. I haven't decided whether I want to do um, like a bark type of thing for the letter or should I do it gold? I haven't decided. Now uh, let's put the water in here first. So I'll, the water, I'm just going to basically have, there'll be a little bit of a, um reflection from this mountain in here so i'm just going to put a little reflective area in here like so i can darken that later and I think I'm going to put a little bit of green in there, too, because I'm going to actually um, put a little gouache in this. Well, I could put just green in there, see what it does. And then I'm going to use the same blue that I had mixed up here. And let's put just that blue. Kind of stay away from... Let's mix a little bit more of that cobalt blue in there. So just dabbing. So actually, I'll have to put a little bit of green in there with, for the uh, this little island here. Just have a. It'll have a little bit of a. Um, reflection also so then I just have a white a wet brush and I'm just gonna let this fade out and we could bring this let it fade out over to here I'm gonna add a little bit of blue not much though so it'll probably be very light then we'll go back later and, and add a little bit more color to that. So little rabbit here, he's gonna, I'm gonna make that more of a, a burnt sienna color, just so that it's a bit different than his, his fur. And we'll add, um, I think we'll use a little bit of stippling on this one. So we're going to use a, let's see, I have a Deerfoot stippler here. And I'm just going to write in this stipple a little bit. And right in here.
I can add um, a little bit in here. Just a bit. And then I'm going to take some of this brown we made up and just lightly dab a bit of that in there too. Just a bit. Because your ground would have different shades of brown in it. And it looks pretty good. Let's see. Just check my chat. Okay, so I'm going to give this a dry just so that we can. Yeah, it's not bad. I hope you're doing good, Dot. And your weather there isn't too. Uh... Hey, Barbara. Oh, no problem, Barbara. There's a traceable for you on the community page in the membership. Just want to get it really good and dry because I'm going to add more water to this. I don't want it to start to fill because it's just sketchbook paper. Okay. And it will lay flat as you see. They lay pretty flat after you close the book. So don't worry if you have a bit of curling to it. Right. So let's try. I'm going to try this new one here let's see how it works it does have a bit of bit more spring I think um, let's add a little bit more of this color in here and I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a, a line right around the edge where they meet. I don't want that really dark. And then a little bit of green in here. Because I am going to add some green. And I was going to add a little bit of green over here too. Just as the uh, We do have a reflection there. All right. And let's see. I think I'm going to just touch that purple just a little bit. Make a little bit darker in here. This mountain back here. A lot of times uh, purple works great for little mountains or whatever you're, you're putting in. Let's bring it across. Like that. And mm, yeah, let's do a little bit of the aqua color to that blue. Just bring it a little bit more into the aqua shade. And I'm just going to brighten this water up a little bit. And then just take the clean, wet brush and just go across the bottom so that it lets the paint move into that clean water and it gives you a nice soft edge. Okay, so let's do the bunny. So, um... I think we'll do him more or less in the grayish tones. So 
I have this um, Payne's Gray and mixed it with that Umber. And you can play with it till you get the right shade of gray. That's good to me. Okay. Now his belly's going to be white, of course, but it's going to have these little his knees and and uh, feet. Tops of his feet will be dark. And I can go in with colored pencils after and put in all the other little accents just so that brings him out a little bit more yeah I like this this got a nice point uh, it's got a little bit more spring than the silver black velvet um, it's about the same price point. Well, this one's going to be a little darker in between his legs there because of his shadow. So I'm going to thicken that up a little bit. Just make it darker in there. Now I could use a colored pencil to do this too. Right in there. But Uh, hey, Devin. You're heading to Costco? <laughs> okay, no problem. Just add this one a little bit. And like I said, you can add your details with colored pencil or pen work. So I'm going to make just around the outer edge of his ears the gray for now. And his face I'm going to make just a little bit lighter. And I'm going to just put a little bit of gray in his ears. But I'm going to also add some pink. A lot of times they have a little bit of pink in their ear. Especially if the sun is shining. Um, let's see, what color do I want? It's almost a coral color though. It'll be very, very uh, pale once this dries. It's very pale. So you kind of have to let it dry before you um, know if it's darker or light. I'm going to put a little bit of light gray in here. Just on his chest. Okay. Now, um, I think I'm going to make uh, more or less a vine. And a vining, I think I'm going to go um, maybe just, let's see. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and a little umber with it. And I've got vines. Uh, you can make as many as you want. You could have them wrapping around, coming in and out of things. 
change it up. Do whatever you want to do. It's fun playing with these in this way. Um, and then this is also going to be a vine. So it's crawling up the... Crawling up the posts of the tree. Now, I didn't draw these in the uh, reference photo, so you don't have to put them in. You could just leave them. I think it looks cool. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Okay. And you could do little swirly whoop doos. Maybe it's sticking up. I'm trying to find a where somewhere else to cling to. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this more of a vine going up the post. You do whatever you would like. It doesn't have to be a lot. Maybe put a few lines here and there in the thick of the foliage just to show that it's a vine. You can add pencil or whatever. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of this reddish sienna color to the top of the little squirrel's head. And kind of down the back. Maybe on his paws. around his little leg there. And maybe on the ends of his tail. I'm just going to lightly, with the tip of my brush, just do a bunch of little strokes. leave some of that other color through though and then his little feet could have a little bit okay Barb all right he looks pretty good all right let's give that a another blow dry and then we'll put in the gold Let's get some gold paint out. Um, I want something fairly opaque. Okay, let's use these. And I think I want... 
Let's see, I'm gonna spray, hmm, what color do I wanna do? Dark one or a lighter one? Maybe this one, the center one. So I just sprayed that and let it sit for a little bit for it to um, soak into the paint. So it softens up a little bit. So I do like these. They do have a nice point. They're a little bit more firm. And these are the um, Golden Natural Blend. 2000 S round by silver. Yep. Kind of hard to see. They are nice. Um, okay, well, that's getting a little bit of uh, soaking up that water. This one, let's go zero five. Let's see. Let's do a little bit of pen work. Um, all I'm going to do, I'll bring you guys in at this point because you don't need to see my palette now. Come on, leave a little bit more. Okay. So all I'm going to do is there's different colors of green in here. So all all I'm going to do is kind of scribble around some of those areas of different greens. So I'm basically sectioning them off. Now you don't have to do all of them. You just do a few if you want. You can kind of get carried away with this type of thing, but I like doing this because it kind of um, shows that they're it's a foliage so it's a way of showing foliage it's doodling i like doodling and then it all depends on how much you want to do you could have just left it uh that would have been fine Down here, I think it would uh, look better if there is more because it would be in the shaded areas. So I'm basically doing the shaded areas, um, which would have a little bit more darkness to it. You do whatever you want. This is how you learn what style you like. So I'm just going to uh, around the edge of the bunny. I just want to darken those areas a little bit so he stands out a little bit more. So just do a bunch of squiggles. And that represents the shadows. So you're not covering all of the paint up, but you are making it look a little bit darker with the squiggles. Okay. Um, then we could, let's see, this would be dark in here by his leg. And between his toes. He's got a little crease in there. This is a, uh, a 
005. It's a very fine one. Pen. I can put a little bit of pink in there on his his little nose. Let's do his arm here. Bottom of his foot would probably be shadowed too. They're fun to do. A little eye here. It's more or less a triangle. And just a little indi uh, indication of where the other eye would be. And then I'm just going to do little marks, like hair marks, on the edge of his ears. So it kind of looks fuzzy. It's cute. And then I'm just going to put an eyeball in there. And here could be darker. Be a little darker under his feet. Now I could use colored pencil too for this type of work. Uh, I like using both. So here's another one that will just squiggle. Now you can follow just uh, one color if you wanted to or if you wanted to you could make a bunch of of uh, leaves too. You do you. Try different things. Maybe you'd want to do a couple of these and one you do uh, one style and then try something different on the next one. It's fun. Again, a little bit more um, scribbling on the bottom where it would be darker. And you can go outside the colored areas too. Like I could put I could put a little squiggles here and there. Sometimes that looks really interesting. I like doing that. Maybe there's a hole in the shrub here so it'd be darker. hot. Okay, let's do this one over here so it'll be darker underneath certain areas. Again, I'm, I'm sticking to the darker color of green here.
Do you do much uh, sketching and watercolor dot, or are you more or less um, stitching and fiber art? I love a um, combination of both. There's a few artists I've seen that do beautiful stitching with watercolor. I think it's such an awesome look. So many things, eh, and so many ideas, but just not enough time. I need... Uh, 48 hour day. <laughs> Where I could be up for a long time without being tired. That would help. Okay, and then this one. These are so much fun to do. I kind of like doing these um, types of illuminated letters where you put a scenery or something around the, the letter. I think that's my, so to speak, cup of tea. Hey, Joan. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I'm just going to put a little bit in this curly cue here. And underneath these vines. Actually, I could just put a bunch of lines in so it looks more textural. That's kind of cool. Same with these. Oh, I guess I should do my letters first. Uh, let's put a little bit uh, he, she needs, he or she needs a little pink nose. So let's put a little bit of pink on his nose. Just a smidge. All right. Now we let this sit for a while now. So now it's good and um, softer. So look, see how nice, nice that is. So now we can use this and fill in our letter. Now I'm gonna have to paint around some of these Uh, leaves and I can put the little doodads in like little squiggles but I don't want to paint uh, over my leaves unless I put gouache but then I'd have to try and match the gouache color with the leaves I had 
which could be a problem because I don't have a lot of gouache. And what I do have is mainly uh, the primaries. So I'd have to make my own color. Do you like having all the colors or do you like to mix your own colors? Let me know in uh, the description. As far as um, economics, economically, it's better just to mix your own but it is very convenient to have them there Oop. I guess I shouldn't be going across my page too much it happens This is kind of thick. Just have to be very careful around the face here. I don't want to cover too much. Okay, and then this one here, I'm going to put a few dabs in the green parts here where the letter would be shining through. Let's try that other brush for this, just to see. It is um, quite a bit stronger, like a stiffer brush, like not bad or anything, but it is um, not as soft. I kind of like it actually. It keeps its uh, form nice. It's nice for... Uh, like points keeps its point under his leg there um, I got these from the brush guys They do have fantastic prices, better than Amazon. Um, now, for Canadians, you do have to pay duty, depending on uh, how much you buy. If you're over, I think it's $100, you'll have to pay duty. And they're, they're fantastic as far as shipping, because they send stuff out so quick. I had it in, the week, in one week. So, you don't have to wait very long. They ship all, all over the world, I think. 
but their prices are really, really good. And they have every type of brush possible. <laughs> and you can, um, I found them uh, by going under the artists brushes or something certain artists have their names up there that they use brushes and that um i think you get a discount also so that's where i found it under um the mind of watercolor guy can't think of his name he uses them They are nice. I like them. A little more easier to control for like detail work, I think. So if you're looking for a nice brush, get one or two of them and try them out. Try. Um, I always use a four and an eight is a good size. They also have different like flats and I haven't used, I don't use flats in watercolor that much. I tend to go with um, the rounds. Now you can use flats, but I never think of it. And yet, in um, acrylic painting, that's pretty well all I use. <laughs> it's all in how you use your brushes. This is a, a nice paint for the gold. I like it. Looks pretty with the green. And you can put a few doodads in here and there. Uh, I don't think I need a Another coat looks pretty good. I'm just going to put a few little gold areas in there. Because make sure there's just the right amount. Then I can go back in with um, colored pencil and fix up any of the um, vines. Yes, I like that brush. Very nice. All right, so let's dry that up and then we'll do a little bit of pencil work. some pencils beside me here. Uh, let's get a white out to start. Mm, there it is. And we'll check that. Out. 
And let's uh, let's give this squirrely a little bit of white belly. And underneath his neck, I think would be white. Uh, I'm gonna just wipe this area a little bit. Won't show a whole lot, but and let's see, maybe the inside of his leg would be a little bit white too, a little bit lighter. And maybe right there. His little cheeks or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and belts. Could actually lighten some of these areas too. Um, let's get a little bit of a brown. I'm just going to put a little bit of brown on the bunny, his ears here. Just, I'm just flicking so down the front of his forehead. Make it a little bit darker and in between his ears. And let's do a little bit under his neck, down the back of his head. I'm just making this up, guys. I haven't got a reference for a bunny or anything here right now. But just to um, contrast is how you get um, your eye to notice things. So. A little bit maybe under here. It's a little squirrely. Like that. And he needs an eyeball. A little darker on his tail. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to use this brown and just add some of those uh, vines shading certain areas underneath them so they look like they're casting a shadow doesn't have to be anything crazy difficult just add a little bit of shadow under so it would be on the bottom part of your vines here. You would see that. So you gotta think about how are they crossing.
keep that in mind. This one. Okay. What else? Oh yeah, it's gonna put in some green on that mountain there. See if this would be dark enough. I don't know. Yep. It's just a bit of green on this mountain. And then that brown. Maybe there's some uneven. that maybe uh, maybe a little bit darker around here the edge of that just like that and I'm going to put some darker areas around the bunny just to shadow him in a little bit. Or it would be shadowed. You can use brown or a gray. Might need to get a little bit darker, I think. Let's see. And same with the um, the base of the vine bush, whatever <laughs> I've made here. And then sp speckle some areas too, because that's um, dirt or ground. So there'd be little rocks and whatnot. In there you could use your uh, brown markers if you have any let's see so I could put a little bit more in here a little bit more of the plant in there and I missed that part And then maybe just a, f I have some white areas in here and some dark, so maybe I'll just put a few little squiggly uh, round things just to represent maybe pebbles or rough sand or sticks, could be all kinds of stuff in there. That. 
All right. Um, could make a little bit of, I don't know if that will show. A little bit of white in there, just a bit. That you know, really don't really need it a whole lot. Um, what else can we do? Could shadow underneath here. Just because it's gold doesn't mean you don't have to. We could actually use a darker gold shadow, but I'm just going to use the colored pencil here. Just add a little bit of shadow areas around the plants where it would shadow. Um, and the bottom of the of this uh, letter. Just give it a little bit. Um, doesn't need a lot. Maybe under here. Around the plants. Just to show that it's got a shadow from the plants. Hmm. It's already got the shadow from the vines, so that's good. Let's put a little bit more in here. I think that's good. Um, I'm going to put just a few more hairs on his ears just to make them cute. Just to give them a little bit of texture. Don't have to put a lot. Just to show that it's fur. <laughs> little toes. Darkening around his feet a little bit. There, I think he's done. Depends how much you want to play with it. You could go on and on and on. I have done that before. <laughs> but it's not needed necessarily because, like I said, the viewer's eye will put things together and will know what it is. 
So I think that's it. So today is 11, 8, 22. All right. So there's our illuminated letter for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a try. There is the... Uh, There is the downloadable for you if you want to um, give it a try. And if you're not a member yet, uh, you can find out about that with the links down below. And um, downloadables are for all my watercolor and my acrylic painting, paint with me or live painting, plus more. And it's uh, $2.99 a month, $2.99 a month. And you get all your, the past downloads too. And if you want more tutorials that you won't see on uh, YouTube, then there's two other levels above that. And uh, you can check that out. Thanks, Dot. Yeah, I think he turned out cute. I like it. All right, so I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic rest of the day. And we'll see you on Thursday and we'll be doing uh, an acrylic painting live tutorial. So have a fantastic day and uh, stay creative, everybody. Bye for now.